Hey guys, this is John with Bar from Standard Tutoring. In this video, I'm going to go and explain substitution reactions more in depth than the previous video, which is more of an overview or a post review of um, all the reactions considering elimination and substitution. So with substitution, there are two way, there are two types of substitution. There's the SN2 reaction or the SN1 reaction. SN2 is that bimolecular reaction, one step. SN1 is the unimolecular reaction, two steps. I'm going to go through the mechanisms for both of them and then go through certain characteristics that affect the rate of the reaction. So the substitution, keep in mind that if you're only going to be looking at sp3 carbons that have leaving groups. Those are the only things that can undergo substitution reactions. So SN2 is the, e is the uh, easy one here. It's just that one step biomolecular reaction. And what's going to happen here is the nucleophile is going to come in and kick off a leaving group right here. And because of that, there's going to be some sort of inversion with the other groups here. These R groups here are going to be inverted to the other side, okay? And the nucleophile is now going to be taking that spot on the left here, and the leaving group is now kicked off. So I have written down here some characteristics of the SN2 reaction. Again, it is bimolecular, and the rate is dependent on two things, the leaving group and the nucleophile. And I'll go more in depth down here and explain what can affect, you know, that rate, what's going to happen with the leaving group and the nucleophile. Again, you have 100% inversion here. Okay, notice that the R groups over here are now switched to this side, and that's because the nucleophile coming in needs to be kind of like directly behind that leaving group, and it's going to push the R's to the other side. And it also, what's also going to affect the SN2 reaction here, the rate, is going to depend on what that carbon really is. So uh, a zero area carbon will be better than a primary, better than a secondary carbon as well. So now moving on to SN1, the unimolecular reaction. Um, this is going to be the two steps where the leaving group leaves the beginning here. So, difference, of course, the nucleophile is not going to come in because the leaving group is either weak, it's not, um, not going to really fall off of the nucleophile, kicking it off, it has to just leave by itself. Nothing's going to, the reaction conditions are not present to actually make a leaving group um, kick off with that nucleophile. So, what just happens is that first step, the leaving group just leaves um, right, right there and it forms the carbocation here. Now the nucleophile can come in either from the top or the bottom because this is a planar molecule, and if it does that, you get a mix of products here. You have the nucleophile attached, of course, but the stereochemistry can be different. It came in from the top or the bottom, so the enantiomer can be present as well. That's why you get a mix of products, some with inversion and some with retention of that um, configuration there. And again, the rate is only dependent on one thing, um, the leaving group, okay? And contrasting that, the nucleophile was involved with SN2, but not with SN1, and that's just because the leaving group leaves at the beginning there, the nucleophile has nothing to do with that. Once it leaves, the nucleophile can, then can come in. And with SN, when SN1 happens, we're going to be looking at carbons that are secondary or tertiary, okay? So now let's, let's delve into what actually affects the rate of a substitution reaction. When you're, when, when you're looking at the leaving group here, and again, SN2 and SN1 depend on the leaving group, you can really just focus on what makes a better leaving group, and better leaving groups are essentially just weaker bases. So if you look at the halogens here, iodine will be the weakest base, then bromine, then chlorine, and then fluorine. And so if you have a leaving group that is Br, it's going to have a faster rate of leaving than Cl. Okay, That's because Br is a weaker base, and so weaker bases are better leaving groups. If you're looking at the nucleophile, remember SN2 is the only substitution reaction that looks at the rate depending on both the nucleophile. Well, there are three kind of conditions that can really um, enhance or not enhance the rate of the reaction here. Less, electro, less electronegative that um, nucleophile is, it's going to be a better nucleophile. So, but you need to remember that it's in the same row. If you look at like the um, row with the oxygen and the nitrogen in it, if you have a nitrogen less, elect less electronegative than the oxygen, and thus it's going to be a better nucleophile. So something like this, NH2 minus is going to be a better nucleophile than OH minus. And that's because nitrogen is more to the left in that row, so it's more electronegative, or less electronegative. Okay. Second condition here, bigger means better nucleophile. So if we, uh, if we like, again look at the halogens, like we did up here for the leading groups, iodine is bigger than bromine, which is bigger than chlorine, and then fluorine. And so, because iodine is bigger, it's going to be a better nucleophile if you're comparing this to like bromine or something. So keep that rule in mind as well. Bigger does equal better in this case. Last kind of condition here, anions are going to be better than things that are neutral. So things with a charge, better nucleophile than things that don't have a charge. That's why if you compare like OH minus to H2O, it's going to have a faster rate if it's the OH minus because of that negative charge. It's more negative in nature. And that's really what all a nucleophile is all about. Okay? So 
Water being compared to OH- is going to be a weaker nucleophile. The rate will happen much more slower than if it's an OH-. So you have these conditions here, um, things that will affect the leaving group. The nucleophile, keep in mind that if you're looking at the nucleophile, you're really look, only looking at SN2 because the SN2 rate depends on both the leaving group and the nucleophile. If you're looking at just SN1, you're just going to be concerned with the leaving group, okay? And so this is substitution, both reactions you need to keep in mind here, and what is going to affect the rates of both reactions, which is this kind of stuff right here. I hope this was of help to you, and uh, stay tuned for the elimination um, segment of these reactions here, and uh, thank you for tuning in.